this is Mary at the Mary Atelier, and I was binding my May art journal in my live stream on Monday. Today is Thursday afternoon, but I didn't get it finished because I needed to move along to let uh, Didi. I didn't want to interrupt Didi streaming, so I thought I'd do a standalone video to go ahead and bind this art journal. Some of you are watching how I'm binding it and then you want to see how I do it. So I will try to go slow here and just get it done. But before I do bind it, let me get my chair up closer to the desk so I can see what I'm doing. Before I bind it, what I want to do is go ahead and put my calendar in the first signature. And I know some of you have said, Mary, with your talent, why are you using a calendar page? Why aren't you just drawing them? Well, the answer is I like these large print calendars and it takes some time. And this is just to be honest with you, it's a little bit easier. This is the month of May. I do have to cut this down to fit my pages. But, uh, yeah, just because you have a talent doesn't mean that you don't want to use other, other things. And I really like these big, large... Now, that's June, but this is me on the other side. I like these big, large writing blocks. So... What I'm going to do, this is my memo. You all watched me paint. This was so fun to paint. And I have it clipped here because I I was punching the holes on the first one. But I'm going to go ahead here and, oh, look what I did here. I did the, <laughs> let's pull this out. I did this this morning. Let's pull it out so you all can see it. Let's get some room on my desk. Penelope, that means I'm going to have to move along here my clips see that that thread wants to hold on to anything that it can it's just like a, a vine <laughs> all right remember that when we get the binding all right so this morning i did this cheryl <laughs> birdie birdie sitting in a tree singing singing sweetly to mary and me i was doing my little bird postcards this morning but you know i think i'm going to i was using this as backing paper so let's let's move these out of the way i'm going to move this sheet i'll substitute it because i want to put another one in here let's get another let's change it out with this one and I might have to realign my holes, my punch holes again. Let's move this one down to here. I wanted to get this in my May art journal because, I want, to tell you the truth, I want to start using it. Birdie Birdie sitting in a tree. And this was all done impromptu, off the cuff, so... It isn't going to be beautiful art, but it's fun art. It's what we did in our morning stream. And look, look straight to you, but it's like that to me. It's at an angle. So that means my camera's probably crooked. Let's see if I can straighten it out a little. Yeah. And I need to, it's going to jiggle for a minute. And I went hoping not to have to edit this video. If the phone rings, I'll probably try to put it on mute, but we've got a fairly loud ringer. So, because my brother is, is deaf, so we have to have it a little loud so that he can hear it. So, but I'll try to get it on mute before. All right, I think you can see this pretty good. I want to go ahead and cut this calendar page that I cut out. Whatever I did with it already. <laughs> I don't know how I can get things out and get all ready. And, you know, I don't even move and I've lost them. I don't know how I do that. So I want to put my calendar right at the front. Probably right in here for the first one. And I like to leave this for ATCs. And uh, 
let me tell you, um, Ruth, Ruth Lamb asked me a really good question in the chat this morning. She said, Mary, I want to send you some happy mail. What can I make for you that would be useful? And I had to think. And do you know what I really enjoy is when you guys send me little bits and pieces that I can use when I'm creating my ATCs and my journal. And I'll make a pocket page. My April journals across the room are I get up and show. But you've seen me make these pocket pages. And then I'll tuck in the happy mail that you send me and the little bits and pieces. And I'll, I'll document who it came from. And I leave that right in my journal. So if you want to send me something, send me little bits and pieces that I can make ATCs from. I really, I really do I like that. So I just want to kind of mention that because I thought that was a, a very good question. I get such wonderful happy mail. And the other thing, if you want to send me something, if you want to um, pass it along to somebody, I'm getting to the point to where I can pass along happy mail. Uh, I won't guarantee that I'll pass it along right at the time that I get it. See, I'm going to leave a little bit of margin space here. Uh, but I will pass it along. And uh, uh, Kimberly Ray sent me... Uh, a lot. She sent me a huge box of of happy mail, and she sent me some uh, what she thought were stickers, but they're really decals. And I'm going to pass some of those along because those are way more than what I can, you know, what I need. I'll use them and enjoy my own, but uh, I'm going to send some out to. A couple of gals who said, oh, they'd like some of those. So if you want to send uh, items that I'm going to kind of combine Friday and Saturday. No, let's let's combine Sunday and Monday. Um, because now let's combine. It just about fits. Maybe I could trim. Yeah. Let's trim Sunday down a little. Um, the thing of it is, I'm I am about my happy mail, and you know how slow I ha am with that these days. Uh, I'm trying to get, I'm trying to get caught up on it. I'm really backlogged, and I feel bad about it. And you've heard me, you heard me talk about it several times. So you know where I am on it. Let's see. I think I'm going to put Sundays down first here. And yeah, this is kind of a, uh, what do you say? I could probably draw this on just as easy. But the thing of it is, this is what I want to do. I, I like these calendars. They're just kind of, uh, what do you want to say? I like the distress element. I like the big long shapes in them. And this is what I want to do. <laughs> so, Mary, do it then. Yeah, let's just put... And this tape that I'm using is an inch wide tape. I don't need to be... Oh, I could put an inch wide on there. But I am... I am tearing it down into narrow, narrow strips. And using it that way. They aren't even and pretty. But it's glue. It's glue. I don't need it to be even and pretty once I pull the release paper off of it. These are um, tape. It's tape. So once I pull the release paper off, it's just like you're spreading glue on it in various places. So I went through the one. The last time I got went to the store, I could find was this one inch wide tape. Now that they know I like the one inch wide stuff, everybody will be grabbing it. And that'll leave me the fourth inch. <laughs> That's reverse psychology. I noticed that I, I swear there's a there's a little birdie that listens to my streams that goes and tells people in my area what I'm looking for. And so they go to the stores and they buy it all out so that when I finally get there, it's all gone. <laughs> or they they tell the the 
managers of the stores what Mary really likes. And so they'll either raise the prices or they won't stock it anymore. See, this is how my head works. <laughs> it's just like, I just found what I wanted and now it's not there anymore. <laughs> yeah. And I still, I was reading Dee Dee's prompts. I, I've missed her Monday and Wednesday streams this week because my life, my life got busy. But I was listening. She likes to read those prompts, those little creativity prompts. And I was, I like to go back in and at least get those down on paper. And uh, one of them was, uh, what would you do to improve something, a product or something, something to that effect? I'm paraphrasing the prompt. And I was thinking, double-sided tape. I say this over and over and over again. If on this double-sided tape, if the company who makes it would just on the release paper when they cut it or when they apply the paper, the release paper to the tape, if they would leave like one sixteenth of a margin on this release paper, it would be so much easier to grab a hold of it when... We are using it, and I think it's a great idea, and I wish they'd listen to me. <laughs> oh, now they don't know me from. They don't know me from Eve. But I think it's a great idea, and if I could do anything, I would do that. Cinco de Mayo is Sunday the 5th, and I think the following Sunday the 12th is Mother's Day. Look at that. But I think that if they would just give us a, 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 on this release paper, on this tape, as you and do it all the way through the roll, just leave like a 16th of an inch of release paper that where we can grab onto it. I watch, it's not only me, I watch people struggle with double-sided tape uh, getting the, the release paper pulled up. I watch the struggle. <laughs> I feel their pain. Now I'm only making two strips out of this, but that's okay. I'm just pulling it, pulling it there. Um, but I watch other people struggle with it too. And I know, I know, burnish it down, and burnishing does help a lot. I will concede that. But it would, you wouldn't even have to burnish if you had a little, just a little pull to, and all the way down, so that no matter where you cut this tape, you'll have that that release tab to hold on to. And you know, you wouldn't have to struggle doing this, and you wouldn't have to to make sure you burnish it down and you know it, it it would just be so much easier um i have a couple other ideas on score uh not just score tape i said score tape because that's a brand name but uh, i have a couple ideas on how they could improve double-sided tape that they sell um but one of them i'm i'm honestly thinking about writing to uh, a particular company and uh, making my suggestion to them because I think it's a personally, I mean, I think this is a idea, good idea too of putting a little, leaving a fourth inch. But I think, you know, I, I, I stand by my idea there, but also I have another idea that I think would be really great. And I'm, I'm really considering contacting that company if I can. I may not be able to, but even if I make the attempt, at least I know I tried. But I was, um, this morning, another uh, comment that came up in my morning stream was, what is the difference between using, I was at my morning stream or, or my impromptu last night, I can't remember. What is the difference between, or maybe it was in Aunt Beck's stream. Yeah, it was in Aunt Beck's stream last night. Beth asked between using double-sided tape and just using a tape runner gun. 
Well, it's both double-sided tape, but like when you have a row of double-sided tape with release paper, you can leave, you can put this down and set it in your book and, you know, maybe you're doing some other type of work. Say, I would say this was a card, a giant card that I was making and I was matting um, the, the doing a mat and I, then I want to come back in and do the photograph. Maybe I wanted to, you know, get pieces out. Well, I could I could put double-sided tape on all my different pieces and get them all ready to go. And I could work with maybe the placement of it. Like, like if I have three or four elements, you know, you could addition pieces with that tape on the back side. And then when you get ready to put everything down, you could go and pull up all the release paper. And uh, so what's the difference between double-sided tape and uh, in a row like this with the release paper or, or a tape gun? It's all double-sided tape, but the release paper is the difference. It gives you, it gives you a, a, a temporary, a temporary, you've got the glue on there, but you don't have to use it right away. It gives you some workability with it. If I use this, putting my tape down with a tape gun, yeah, it would work. You could get it down there, and uh, it would work just as, probably just as nice, the whole thing. And it may be, depend on how you work. You may say, oh, just put it down. <laughs> but uh, if you want to know the difference, what I think the difference is, it's the release paper gives you the ability to... To addition things and to, to get it all ready to go and then put it down. And so I'm going to put my calendar down here. I'm doing this ahead of time before I bind the book because I want it I want it in there before I uh, bind the book into my journal. So there's the first half of the month. And it's already Thursday. It's already the second. And I need to make some notes here. And I also want to make some gardening pages. Jerry's going to do a, a Jerry Bellini at Recycle Parts for Art. She posted that she was going to do a um, gardening journal. A gardening diary, I think is what she called it. I think that's a terrific idea. I don't want to get too many different journals going. I... I have this April journal, and then I have the little journals that we make when Tanya at this set and chat and Lisa at uh, Lisa My Eclectic Life. They do hangouts every month, and so far in 2019, they have been making mini books, little mini journals. And I really like that, but I don't want to get 12 million different journals going i like i i want everything to be in one let's cut this little calendar out um so if i do a gardening diary which i would really love to it's really cold out it's even cold today it's a little bit warmer but it, we've had a very chilly spring i'm gonna make saturday very i don't like to saturdays are just as full as my other days but yeah i know mary now, I think I'm also going to double up on this. This is how I do it. I like these big numbers. Um, yeah, I know I could make my own calendar, but I guess I'm not. <laughs> so I'll put this in here, and then I'll double up on this. I don't want to do it there, though. I want to do it here, because this is going to be for ATCs. So we'll put it over on... This happens to be tracing paper. Let's not do it there. Let's do it on the back of Cheryl's birdie birdie. Birdie birdie sitting in a tree, singing, singing, sweet to Mary and me. Cheryl likes to write these little rhymes in my stream, and they're so cute. They are so cute. I enjoy them so much, Cheryl. I still have to trim this down just a little. I guess I'm going to trim down the eighth. I don't make the eighth and the seventh overlap. put this down here to me this is more <laughs> this is more journaly 
this is making it fit making it fit i don't need this let's trim that off yeah that's what i'm going to do <laughs> So I would have taken this live. This is an unlisted stream. What I like to do with these streams is go unlisted. Uh, the only thing I don't like about them is sometimes, sometimes I, I need to edit them. But if I can go unlisted and then review it and then set it to live without downloading it, I do like doing that. Uh, but... Uh, if I go live with something like this, I'm always worried, too, about did I welcome somebody? Did I miss somebody? Am I missing somebody wanting to talk to me? So when I'm working on a project like this, it's really better for me to do an unlisted stream, especially since, you know, I'm working on. And this morning in my impromptu, you know, I did all those postcards. And that's all I did this morning were postcards. And, uh, you know, that can get kind of boring to watch. Uh, I don't know if I would have stayed in there the whole time myself, except for if, you know, I love my, I love my community. And <laughs> they're very good to me. But uh, working on the same project for, well, I'm getting things stuck all over the place here. The same project for over an hour. And just doing repetitive things like inking the edges of a postcard or collaging, um, putting together your journal, stuff like that can become very boring to watch. You know, like I'm watching paint dry for you. <laughs> so sometimes uh, when you do projects like this, I just like to do it as an enlisted or a standalone video. So... Yeah, what did I do here? Yeah, I'm just pulling tape off of the, I don't need that much. Let's just pull it off here. I don't even need that much. Yeah, we'll put it down in here. So, after I get this calendar in here, I'm going to go ahead and bind it and because I want, I really wanted this journal all put together by the 1st of May. Well, I was lucky to get the cover painted by the 1st of May, <laughs> but uh, you know, life happens. Uh, yesterday was the 1st of May and I, I started binding it, but uh, you know, that was, I had to, I had to end my stream. I'd already been on for like three hours, I think. And uh, um, yesterday afternoon, we were busy, so I couldn't do it as a standalone. And here it is, the 2nd of May, and I want to get my journal. I'm not sure what I'm doing there. I think I might have more than one piece of tape on that. Yeah. See, this is where I need the release. The little release paper on here would work real nice. So tape manufacturers, are you listening to me? Are you listening to me? You can't even find me. <laughs> you don't know who I am. Who are you? Who do you think you are telling us how to manufacture our product? You think you know better than we do? We've been doing this for years. <laughs> this is how I talk to myself when I'm alone. I, I take their I, devil's advocate. I play devil's advocate. Nobody's ever claimed, nobody's ever complained to us before about this. You must be a troublemaker. <laughs> oh, you must be wanted to want, want us to treat you special or something. You think you're special? I don't know what I did here. I've got more than, I'm going to pull this off. I don't know what's going on there. Well, to answer that, yes. I do think I know more than you do. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm kind of special. You could, I'm your customer. 
you know, listen to how your customer perceives your product. <laughs> Let's see, 18 and 25 go here. And am I going to get it on there? I might still have to trim this down a little. And I don't mind if I have to. Uh, this is me playing in my art journal. I, I'm not needing perfection here. And I just don't want to do the numbers thing. I don't want to have to draw my own calendar. So what else have you been doing in your life, Mary? Well, I have started today. Well, actually, I started last night. Um, I've got all the shelving up in my room now. Uh, sometime toward the end of last year, I did a video. And I probably will not put a link to it because I'll have to go find it. But I'm sure there are those of you who remember it where I showed what my room looked like and why, you know, it's just it was kind of disorganized. And I pulled everything out in the middle of the room. I did not have enough shelving space. I had a bed behind me. And um, yeah, I showed I showed the room for from from uh, all four corners. And uh, I got tape on my hand now. So over the Christmas, I got shelving behind me. I got one, two, three, four, five, five new shelves, uh, five, five shelf shelves, five, five high, and then one that's been here for. A long time that I've kind of taken over and I've I got uh, the little cart that Lucia sent me the little hobby cart and then I went to Harbor Freight and got another one and they're full <laughs> and I've got a buffet and a computer desk and then the desk that I'm working on so I've I've got plenty as far as that goes it's just getting it organized now and that's what I'm working on where's the rest of my month here so I am working on, let's see, I hate to cut this. I'll just have to write Memorial Day on the 27th. So last night I started and I picked one shelf. I mean, yeah, I picked one shelf of one shelf unit. Let me write Memorial Day on the 27th here. And today I finished, last night I picked one shelf and started organizing it. Victoria Day is on, what, the 20th? Yeah, Victoria Day in Canada. This is Memorial Day. It's when we go out and decorate all the grave sites. I think it's really to memorialize the, the fallen soldiers. But we go and put flowers on my parents' grave. And, you know, you kind of think of your parents and your family that's passed on. Oops. Yeah, I think this tape tearing it like this is, has increased its value to me, e even though it's not, <laughs> it's not always easy to tear it like this. But uh, I think I get more value out of it because I'm using it in little strips rather than one big strip. So, so um, today I went in and finished sorting out that one shelving unit and organized what I want on the top shelf, what I want on the second and the third. And then on the very bottom, uh, last year I went to a library sale and uh, I bought this entire set of vintage art encyclopedias. And I started doing art journaling in one and you know how that goes. I, I got sidetracked. But I've got all the other volumes behind me on the bottom shelf of that uh, shelving unit. So I was thinking that maybe it'd be fun to go through some of those and maybe find some words for my art trivia game that I'm playing on Friday nights. That art trivia game is, was really kind of fun. I want to keep that up. So if you're listening to this on Friday night, in my Friday night stream, I stream at 7.30 p.m. Central Time, from 7.30 until we get tired. Usually it's about 11.30, sometimes 12 Central Time. And, you know, some of the gals get tired and 
they got a big day going the next day. They say good night, but some of us are still still going. Sometimes I get tired. Uh, but I'm playing a trivia game now. I just started it last week. And uh, it, I'm not playing the game. We're not playing the game per se. We are creating the game. And I'm choosing three words that are related to art. It may be, it may not, it's a word, but it may be a word of a, it may be an artist or a style. Um, this week we picked, uh, oh, I can't even think, uh, um, articulated and, well, artic we'll just use articulated because I'd have to go back and look at the others. Articulated and then we come up with some definitions that are very close but are wrong but would make you think oh it could be that but is there a better answer and then uh three or four and then we pick the right answer and i'm putting those art trivia game questions out on my community tab i've only got two of them i want to put the other one up today after i get done here so i've got i've got three a week. I want to do three a week. And I think that's going to be fun because it not only is it art is history, it's kind of like an art education thing. And I enjoy that. You know, it's, it's not meant to be anything <laughs> intellectual or anything like that. It's just something for fun. And I truthfully think it's more fun to create it in a group setting because we get to talking about it and we get these funny answers and <laughs> we're like articulated. One of the gals said, your head spinning round and around and around. <laughs> oh, that was close. <laughs> um, there we go. So now I got my calendar page in and I've got, let's get all these little these little scrappies annoy me. Oh, they annoy me. Let's get them all off of my desk. I'll save my little calendar here for a pocket page. Let's get these. Let's throw. <laughs> There's the other thing I want to do. I want to get a little folding TV tray or something that when I stream, I can set it right off to the left-hand side of me. I make a table out of my wastebasket by putting flat things on top of my wastebasket. But then when I have to throw things away, I have to lift everything off of my wastebasket in order to throw my scraps in it. <laughs> That's how I roll. But these little scrappy things, I love my double-sided tape, but all this, these little, oops, something fell over. Something important. I don't know what fell over. It's probably something I need. I still have my needles. I've got my thread. I've got my... Uh, I uh, My desk only goes so far up here, and then there's a space between my desk and the window. And every time I knock something over like that, I say it goes over the cliff. <laughs> I try to keep all my paints and wet media closed, so if it falls over the cliff... That could be an art term. Falls over the cliff. <laughs> uh, um, that it doesn't spill out on the carpeting. I have this fear. Oh, I'll bet it was one of these clamps that fell over. All right. So I'm getting ready to bind the first journal. And where I was last week was I had, or last Monday, when I was getting ready to do this first signature i already had the holes poked in it but now i've moved it around a lot so let's go through and let's get my journal cover out i've gotten so many compliments on this journal cover it was so fun to paint this and i'll tell you i did this rose in one of my streams and it took me forever to do and i wasn't happy with it after i got it done because it didn't look like what i was doing but if that happens to you, put what you were, look, put it, your reference photo or your reference piece away when you get to a certain point. Put it away and don't look at it anymore. And uh, after I did that, 
And I set this down and I went about my day and I come back, you know, that rose isn't so bad after all. But then the next day, I it, it, it stalled me because I thought, oh, I'm going to have to spend all that time on the rest of this page. And it's going to take me till July to get this page done. Well, I came in on, uh, I came in Thursday morning. No, today's Thursday, Tuesday morning. You know what day it was. And I was, I was going through my pages. I was putting these pages together and I run across that shopping bag, this shopping bag. In fact, this is the one I used as a reference, I think. No, it may be another one I have down there. They're very similar. And I said, well, I'm going to use that as a reference. And so I started doing all these impressionistic flowers and, you know, so much easier. I had it done by the end of the stream. <laughs> so I want to go back in and redo these little holes in here and let's well, see I have to find the center again and they're not going to line up I don't think I may get them through the same point let's see yeah pretty much right in there so what I do is I, I start out poking a hole through and you'll see gals will get a book like a phone book and they'll put their, put their, clamp their pages. I could clamp my pages shut here. Clamp your pages so that, so that you have some control over what you're doing. And I think I knocked my other clamp off. Yeah, I probably did because I don't see one over here. Um, I had three of these bulldog clamps. I might get more bulldog clamps. But I start in the center right here. I start in the center. And then I generally go up to the top of my book and I put two when I bind and you'll see later on why I put two in here. But I'll tell you now, it has to do with my tassel that I put on the back of my journals. Now, I think I'm going to have to repoke these and I don't mind having to do it. But some of the gals, some, some of the gals will make a template like this because they want all their signatures to line up. So they'll get a, a piece of paper um, just about two or three inches wide and they'll fold it in the center and they'll use that piece of paper. They'll mark their holes on that and use that piece of paper as a template and they'll go from this signature to the next one to the next one. I don't do that just simply because I'm not that particular with my journals here but when I do do it I start in the center and with my this is my pokey tool somebody asked me where I got this and I honestly cannot tell you I think I got it at a scrapbook store like archivers when they were still in business and it's a really sharp tool and I've had it for years but you could use an awl but um, and another thing I was saying that some of the gals will rest their pages in a, like a phone book and then when they poke through here, this will go down into the center of that foam book rather than on your table. Now, I don't worry about it because I've got a foam board underneath of this. So I don't worry ab about it for me personally. Let's see. I'm going to see if I can't get these holes here punched. But then I come up to the top of my page and I, I about three-fourths of an inch down here. I'll poke a hole and let's get this one. I'm, I'm going to have to re-drill this one. And honestly, I should be doing this with the cover too. Let's put my cover on here. And let's clip. Sometimes when you do this, you need 20 hands. <laughs> you need more than one hand. And that's why we have these clamps. Now, I'm probably going to have to readjust that. But... You kind of center your book where you want it to close up. And this is the top. And down here is my signature. So this is the bottom. And I've kind of already figured out where I want my first signature to go in here. I have a two and a half inch spine. I'm going to have two signatures of different types of paper. And then I'm hoping to get my canvas in here. I don't know. We'll see. We'll deal with that when I have my canvas done. I have some canvas from Acrylic April. Now, I don't have good lighting in here. And Penelope, yeah, she's already toppled over and I'm going to knock my thread off. And I've got ink from this morning. <laughs> you need to clear off your good space to work. 
All right, let's go through the paper first. I'm going back through that hole that I punched this morning. I'm through the paper, almost through it, through this paper here. Now I want to make sure that I'm going through the, and this is where I might have to readjust because I've, I've got the holes in here, I think. I do. I'm going to put it in through the hole that I punched. And this is where I have to readjust where these pages because I want to get them where I had them on Monday. So see, I'm through there. This is the center one, the top one. The center one's down here, but I had to readjust it. I think I'm going to be okay down there. So we're just going to leave this here for a moment while I reclamp these pages. We'll do this one first because it's closest to me. The closest to the clamp, I mean. Oops, let me go on mute. Okay, I'm back. When the phone rings like that, I have to set it on mute um, because we never know who it is. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to go through the, the second one, which is about a quarter of an inch down. I'm going to repunch that hole. And if my pages are not totally straight, that really doesn't bother me too much because it's an art journal. And if I don't like how crooked they are, I'll trim them off. Now I'm going to go through the second hole that I made the other morning and make sure that fits. Because this is what I would be doing with my needle. I'm just getting this ready to put my needle through here. So there's the second one. And let's go do the third one again and put it through the center, which is pretty much on pretty much straight. Uh, where is it? It's right here. It might be a little crooked, but I, I'm getting it. And by the time you put your binding in there, you aren't even going to notice. You aren't even going to notice because the, the thread will kind of center it all out. You'll see as I go. And now let's go do the bottom one. And that's where I left off on Monday. That's where I left off on Monday. So all we've done so far is put my calendar page in and uh, let me punch this one again. It's being stubborn. We put my calendar page in and we're repunching these holes from Monday. And uh, I have five punch. Let's put it through here. Right. It'll go. It'll go. I can see it there. See, I've got it through. And I take my little pokey tool sharp tool you can use an awl if you can find one of these pokey tools on the market so, um i i don't i don't search for them myself because i've been using this one forever so here i am i'm at the part i'm at the place where i was on monday so i've got i'm counting these two at the top as one so i've got three one two three well i want seven so I'm going to put one here and one here. So there'll be two between the top and the middle and one here and one here. And there'll be two there. Those two are the two between the center and the bottom. And I've, I like to, this size of journal. By the time we get it folded close is 11 and a half by eight and a half by 11. Eight and a half by 11. Now I'm going to take, I'm missing my third. Let me. Let me take this off of my scissors holder. And I need another clamp. I knocked that other clamp off of the... I need to... I need these papers clamped. And let's just... Can it, will it hold it? Fairly well. Well, maybe not. Maybe over. 
maybe over here. I sometimes I struggle with it, and I'm struggling too because let's get this ink cartridges off of my desk here, and so I can turn on this light. Maybe I need some light here. There, a little more light. Now, when you have your pages out flat like this, of course. And I clamped it while it was shut. So you might want to clamp it while your book is wide open. So when you open and, and it, it's different. See, when I shut it, it the clamp wants to, you kind of have to work with how you clamp it when you're using a clamp. Kind of want to get it so it's comfortable right in there. When I say comfortable, I mean even so that you can poke your holes. So I'm going to just kind of guess between the top the top and the center and the top i mean the very top not this bottom top <laughs> so you want to put two in here so you just kind of i i eyeball it you can measure it all out if you want I, i'm not a perfectionist that way and i'm just drilling another hole in there and it'll come through in a minute it's getting there there it's there it's coming After you get after you get uh, one side of your thread as you're you as you're doing your pamphlet stitch, I find that once I get it from here down to here and I'm ready to go back, it's a lot easier. The book is it's it's found its journey. It's found where it wants to be. It works out nice. That's my take on it. But I do take my needle, and if you can see, my needle is right here. And I just kind of, I, I enlarge that space so that my needle can find its way through. And sometimes I'll take my pokey tool and move it up and down, just kind of push it up and down, just making room in that uh, paper for my needle to go through. Now I'm going to do the second one, and I'm just kind of eyeballing it down probably about maybe an inch and a half, two inches approximately. And I'm doing the same thing. I'm just, I'm just boring a hole by pushing my little sharp tool. Now see it's coming through right here. I don't know if you can see it, but it's, it's right there. It's coming through. And I do the same thing. I just kind of move it around, push it up and down. If it comes out, and you can put it right back in again. That probably means that you've got a pretty good, pretty good space in there going with your needles. And you can do that three or four times just to make sure that when you get ready to put your needle in there that it finds its spot. Same thing with this center one. All right. Now we're ready to do the bottom two. And I'm going to turn it around actually this way. But I know this is the bottom because there's my signature right here. Some of the gals will mark the bottom. They'll either draw a little pencil mark or, you know, they'll do something to indicate which is the bottom and the top. It really matters more when you're, when you are doing your pages one at a time or something like that. Because if you don't mark the bottom and the top, then your space from here to here may be different from your space here to here. And if you have those reversed, then your page, your little center holes don't match up. I don't really have that problem because I just poke, poke my tool through it all at once. And you just wobble it through, you know, just make sure you have a, a good space for your needle to go through. Now, my needle is going through... I think I counted 25 pages in my signature or 30. 25 to 30 paper pages. And then I have this outside as a canvas. And then on the canvas, I have duct tape on the spine. and Or Gorilla Tape is what it is. So it's going through quite a few layers. Now I'm doing the, the last one on the bottom. And I'm just eyeballing it about two inches apart here maybe a little more doesn't matter unless you want it to matter 
if you want it to matter, measure it all out. Some of you like to have things equal spaces. And, you know, that's your style. Go for it. I don't have anything against that style. It's just not me. <laughs> all right. So I've got all my holes poked through here. And I'll go back through several times with this. I should call it an awl. It's not really an awl that you would buy in a hardware store. But I call it a pokey tool. I, I, that's the slang name for it. <laughs> and I go back through this several times, make sure that make sure that my needle can find the spot. And if your pokey tool, if your needle, if your tool that you're punching with finds the spot easy enough, then you know your needle is. And this isn't finding its sweet spot. It's a little bit off. Let's see if these are off. That's probably because of the way that this is going. I think I turned my book. Let's turn it back this way. Let's start with these. Now, it's a little off here. What have I done? And you'll find that for yourself, too. You want to... I clamp this. Here, I clamp that. Let's get rid of that clamp. If you have to redo it, there I think it's fine. And no, I'm I'm up a little higher. It doesn't matter if you need to poke another hole in it. Go for it. I think my pages are a little. No, that's just the way that. Well, when I close it, well, it's got this that it's dealing with. I think it's okay. We will see. But I need these beginning. I need the, there it went in. I need these beginning pieces to, to be, be there for me when I start. And I've got a couple little holes in there, but I think I'll be okay. So here they are. So now I'm going to get my thread ready and I'm using I'm 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 kind of liking this crochet thread. Um, I like it better than the hemp. Uh, you can get wax linen, you can get book binding linen, but I like this because after I bind it and I I double it, I double it, so that gives me a pretty strong, a pretty strong bind, and I go down and up again. So it it's I haven't had a problem with it. And I haven't had a problem with it wearing through. Uh, maybe after 50 years it might tear. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm using crochet thread to, to bind this with. I'm happy with it. And I'm happy because the way I bind is I make my tassels as I go. And this makes, if you get several pieces together here, it makes a pretty tassel. So you get out your crochet thread or your, your binding, whatever whatever you're using to bind with. And you start measuring. I gotta find the beginning of it here. And I call this, I call this thread, <laughs> I call it a morning glory bind because you want to clear everything off of your desk when you do this. Because I tell you, it will, it's like a, a morning glory vine or any type of a climbing vine. It will find something to latch on to. And look, I've already got a knot there. Let me clip that out because I don't want to. I haven't even threaded my needle yet. Let's clip that off. I don't need that. So what I do, yeah, I do that same trick. If you make it a little bit longer than the length of your book. The length of my book is 11. I think it's 11 and a fourth. Um, I made it a list a little taller. And I leave maybe about four or five inches. So uh, on each side, I just give myself some space when I'm figuring up how, how long I want the beginning length. And then I, I take about five or six of these. I go one, two, it's the same length. I just keep doubling it up as I, as I, pull it off the, the, the skein here. So there's three, four, there's four, 
And I was doing five on my leather journals. Let's see, what do I have there? Four. One, two, three, four. Here's five. But I'm going to go for six this time. I'm going to go for six. So I have six strands the same length. So now I grab it at the point to where my thread goes onto my skein. And then I start pulling this out to double it. And I just start doubling it, my thread this way. And I just pull it the entire length. Uh, I let it kind of pile up over here, nice and neat. Get those clamps out of the way. Because it'll catch on to them. See, it already has found it there. And my nice little pile here is all tangly. Get your scissors. Well, you'll need my scissors, but I don't need two pair of scissors. Now put them aside. Get your ink pens out of the way. Move your pliers. <laughs> you just want a clear work area because this is a vine that will climb onto anything. It'll cling onto anything that it can. It's just it, it it's just like a magnet to it. All right. So I have six lengths and I took and I doubled those. So I've got a really long piece of binding thread. Now, bookbinders will tell beginning bookbinders that long lengths uh, don't do long lengths of thread. It'll frustrate you. You'll you'll hate it. <laughs> That's what I hear. But uh, I've done enough of this that I don't hate it. And I like it because I don't have to stop and re-knot it. And I have enough to make my tassel from my beginning thread. That's just the way that I work personally. Now, I moved everything off of my desk. So where are my needles? Did I knock my needles over? No, I didn't knock my needles over, did I? Penelope, where are you? I'm right here, Mary. <laughs> I know you've got a needle I can use. Yeah, you, you stole my other needle. Yeah, but I have a whole package of new needles for you. <laughs> now, when I thread my needle, um, this happens to be a craft needle with a curved point. I don't generally use these, but we're going to use it now because I don't know where my other pack of craft needles went off to when I cleared my desk. They might have fallen over the, they might have fallen over the cliff. I might have knocked them over. We'll see. I didn't think I did. But I got a needle. And you'll want a big craft style needle. And I generally use a straight needle. This has got that curved point to it. But we'll see how this goes. And what you do is you thread your needle with the two open strands. You put both of them through the point. And yeah, I get a little DNA on mine. I figure it won't hurt. Maybe someday they'll identify my art journals by my DNA. <laughs> and thread it through. Oops, see, I didn't get them both through. You want to get them both through. It's a double strand that you're going to work with. And of course, you know, you always have more trouble threading your needle when you're doing a live stream. That's just, that's a rule. That's a law. There we go. It is a law. All right. Let's kind of straighten this out. And then you just leave a length on there. Now, let's get my scissors out of the way. I might need my pokey tool. Let's get the scrap out of the way. All right. So now I'm ready to start binding. So I want to start at the top here. And I'm going to start on the inside, and I'm going to, oh, I can already tell that that needle is going to be really thick, but let's poke it through. I'll, I'll probably have to bore my own hole with this needle. Uh, I'm not even sure it's sharp enough to go. Yeah, it's getting in there. You just, I'm having to go, because my needle is a different needle than I'm used to. It's wider down here. I don't know if I like that needle. Let's find my other needles. If I could pause this, I would. Did I knock my needles off? Yeah, I moved everything off over here. Did I knock my needles off? 
this is what happens to me in the live streams too. When I go live, I have them out ready to use. Yeah. Yep, my needles fell over the cliff. That's what fell over the cliff. I'm going to see if I can't rescue them. Now, if I were doing a standalone video at this point, I would probably edit all of this out. Move my lamp so I don't knock it over. I'm going to reach, hopefully, for my needles. Ah, I'm getting them. And it has been suggested in my live streams to put a... Uh, let's get my light back again. I need more light. Put a piece of something to prevent those things from falling off of my desk over into the... I call it over the cliff. But the problem with that is, is my camera stand... My camera stand is right in front of my desk, and I'd have to bore a hole in it or all of that, and I'm not up to doing all of that. I go pick things over the cliff, and I'm not editing this out. I'm going to rethread my needle because this is this needle. This is good for you to know, though. This needle is it's got uh, a curved point here. And it's really wide down here at the, see how it's curved? And it's got a wide shaft here. And that isn't going through my holes that I poke too well. So Penelope, you can have this needle back for a good long time. We'll put it right in here. She likes needles. She was made to be a pin cushion doll, so she can take it. All right, so what kind of a needle do we want? Head, hand needles, heavy duty. Ben Franklin. Oh, wow, that's an oldie. Let's see. We have, see, here's the curved needle here again. That is called uh, sacks, bags, and hampers. That's to use on sacks, bags, and hampers. This is to use on chairs and sofas, a big long pointed needle, carpets and heavy work, or tents, deck chairs, and canvas. I think that's the one that I'm going to use. Set this aside, rethread my needle. Not going to edit this out. Get the DNA on the thread, otherwise known as spit. Or saliva. <laughs> it's a it's a sewing term. No, it's not really, but see how much easier it was to thread that? All right. So I'm back at the point where I want to put my needle through the top. The top of the top hole, the very top of the top. I got two little holes here, about a fourth of an inch, maybe a half of an inch apart. I thread it through, and it should go through after all of that. It should go through fairly easy. And I find that these pages have gotten kind of shuffled. Let's see if I probably have trouble with it. I got holes in there, though. It should find its way there. And we're going to go through. Oops, I pulled it out. I'm going to th go through the book cover one. And sometimes I just kind of have to get it up to my nose to see where I'm going. There it's going through. I'm going to get my ruler out of the way because it'll hold on to my ruler. And I'm going to um, start pulling this thread through. And you could put the clamp back on here. I find at this point, I put the clamp on, I take the clamp off. I put the clamp on, I take the clamp off. <laughs> but just start pulling it through. See, my needle's all the way through there, right here. Just start pulling it through from the inside to the outside. And uh, this is my front cover here. Here's my name down there. Everything's good. So let's just start pulling this through. I'm pulling it from the back. Pulling it through. 
I'm pulling with my left hand, I'll have you know. <laughs> Let's pull it with my right hand. It goes a little faster. And because it's long, I find the trick to using a long thread like this is to go slow and uh, keep your thread loose and even. If it starts to tangle or it's it'll grab onto little scraps of paper, clear off your work area. If it starts to tangle, kind of shake it loose. Don't pull it tight. And just take your time doing this. I, I think we want to do this lickety split just to prove how good we are. <laughs> okay. See, look, I have the loop down here. This is a double-sided. This is two sides of a thread. I, I put this two open ends through the needle, and this is the loop end. And I just pull it through, and now I want to throw that needle back through my loop end. And you might, you know, you might have to straighten your thread out again, you know, and just pull it back through the loop end. Um, no, I don't want to do that. Erase that. And we want to go through the loop end, but we don't. Well, we could do it the way Tanya does it. And she would do this. And she would let her thread come over the top of this margin and hold that down good. But I, I don't like to do that personally. That's not my thing because I find my thread tears my paper. Let's get my needle out of here. I've done that a couple times now. Let's get it out. I don't have anything against Tanya doing it. It's a it's a technique to bring your thread around this. But uh, I personally, I would rather leave these open. And I find that it depends on how you work and what you want your journal to be. But I, I find that if there's anything that tears my paper, what I want this needle is to come back through this open. See, there's a little bottom hold right underneath about a half an inch, maybe a fourth inch, three-thirths of an inch. I want that to come back from the back into the center. So I find my find my little hole there. And it seems to me like it's always harder to go back from the back, back into the front. You might have to unclamp it to find your page here. Uh, unclamp it here. But usually after you get one or two of these, it's finding it. After you get one one or two of these, it's pretty easy. Uh, after you get the, I say after I get down to the bottom of it, it pretty much finds its way. I'm just kind of poking it through. Where is it coming at? That's yeah, okay. And poke it right through here. Yes, it's finding a new hole. It's finding a new hole in some of these papers. That's okay, too. I don't mind. I paint over them. Yeah, it's finding its own way through there. I'm not sure I like that, but am I going to? Yeah, I am. I'm, I'm not sure I like that. Let's redo this. And this is me doing my journaling. If I don't like something, you know, I'm not saying this is this is not a tutorial. That's what I say. This really is not a tutorial. I'm doing this slow to show you what I go through when I bind my journals. And there are probably other answers around this. I'm, I'm way off on this. Let's get it. I started it there. I have my hole right there. Why isn't it going? There it goes. It's just finding its way. It has to find its way. And once you get it, once you get it and get it centered in there, generally it's not as hard. It's it's getting the first couple threads through there. And look, I where's the other one? Did I get I only got one through it? <sighs> What happened here? Let's pull that out again. Don't panic. Don't panic. I dropped my thread here. Where's the other end of it? 
there. Let's pull that back out. We'll have to redo that, but that's okay. That's okay. <laughs> Don't panic. Just three thread the needle with both threads. I think my needle's on the inside. And see, I pulled those clips off and my thread grabs a hold of them. Let's get them out of the way. I'll go find my needle. I think it's on the inside here. There it is. So I know I have my center holes in there pretty good. It's just a matter of, of getting it started so that you can stitch them in there. And usually it's just like anything else when you're starting out. You have to get those beginning ones how you want them and then the rest fall into place they're the they're the leaders now let's see let's get my paper organized again here we're coming and i do find it's sometimes you can go back through with your pokey tool and i pulled both of my clamps off but let's go through this again with my pokey tool let's pull this back Give it some more space so that I don't. Let's go back through this with my pokey tool. And clamp this again. Get it nice and straight. Clamp it. We're going to make sure my needle can find its way. Come on, where you at? Yeah, clamp it. Now I want to see it. This is not a tutorial. This is just me. There it is. Me showing you how I bind my journals. If you want a professional book binding tutorial, I would say go watch Shannon Green. Go watch uh, C. Lemon does a a lot of beautiful book binding tutorials. Sea Lemon. S-E-A-L-E-M-O-N. See, look, that thread just cut on there. But I go off into my own little, my own little journey. I don't do things exactly like they do because, well, you know, you find that you will too. <laughs> you find that you find your own ways of doing things. And uh, this brings me to another topic, like, where's my needle? Here it is. I want to come from the back and to the front again. Sometimes when I'm doing things, I appreciate all the comments and suggestions because I get some really good ones from my live stream. But sometimes it frustrates me because, you know, it's like, if I don't do something the way you do it, it does not make it necessarily mean that it's wrong uh it's a different way of approaching it and i get all this good advice <laughs> and then if i don't follow it then you know then i've insulted somebody and uh you know some of it's good and i'll try it and if i like it i'll continue but uh it kind of frustrates me, you know, if that's the way you want to do yours, go do it your way. Leave me alone. Let me do mine. <laughs> uh, and I think all of us are like that to a certain point. Like, you know, like when we're following in classes sometimes, do you ever find this with yourself there? I've got it through good. Um, you know, the teacher will have all the instructions. I see this a lot when we get together and do group projects. The instructor will have it all laid out for you nice and neat with instructions and, you know, this is how you do it and all of that. And you just, you get a bright idea and you go down a different journey and it's nothing like the instructors. You didn't do what they did. And uh, <laughs> uh, sometimes I see that a lot. Now, I've got a knot here. I'm not going to panic. I'm just working it loose. It's not a knot. It's just a little, the, the thread just kind of grouped up. Okay, I got my thread from the back, the top. There's a, 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 a space here at the top and one about a fourth of an inch, maybe three-eighths of an inch underneath of it. 
and I came through with my needle, went down, pulled my thread clear through almost to the bottom where I have this loop. And then from the back, I had a little bit of trouble getting back through here. But uh, once I do this, it will it will find its way. And I'm just going to pull it through, kind of keep my thread, my needle out to itself so that I can find it when I get through. You just pull it through. If it gets tangled down, try to keep it from tangling down there. Just try to keep it clean. And this is where I say, try to keep your desk free of all objects so that it, it, this thread wants to catch on to anything. Just pull it through. Sometimes it'll catch on to the edge of the desk. It'll catch on to the edge of the book. It'll catch on to the class. And that's, that's one of the trials of using a longer thread. You have more to work with, more to get caught, more to get tangled. Um, it's it can be frustrating, but I I if you do it slow and work things through. Now see I've on here over here I've I've getting a I I need to make sure that I let it go through clean and I have a longer thread and a shorter thread. Let's see if I can figure out. Now I got it even. So just pull it through, pull it through, pull it through, pull it through. So now I got this loop, I got this thread. On the back, I've got my, it's kind of crooked, but you know, I don't mind that because by the time I get my tassel in there, it won't even show. All right. I think I'm all good down here. Yeah, I think I'm pretty good down there. So when I take my needle and yeah, I got this big long thread and I left the loop here. A fairly long loop you can shorten that loop a little now if you want just by gently pulling it if you can it's got a lot to go through I'm going to pull it from the back I'm pulling this top loop through making this shorter there probably about like that I want to put my needle through that loop and pull it through. And I sometimes just set my needle aside and just pull the thread. Go slow. Keep your thread straight so that it keep objects out of the way. And just go slow. Just pull it through, pull it through, pull it through. Now, I have a lot of layers that I'm going through here. So I might have to pull this from the back again. Because I want to pull this tight now. And then I want to pull this tight. And that makes a blind knot. Now you could have knotted it there and just had a knot. You might have just been happy with that. I don't have any objection to you knotting it. I just like to do the blind knot. All right. So I'm going to skip this center hole here. This top one. We've got, uh, not the center hole. I'm going to skip the, this is the center hole. I'm going to skip the one right below the top one and go to the second one between the center and the top. I got one, two, I got one, two, three, four is my center, five, six, seven. So I'm going to skip two and go to three. And I'll put my needle through and it should go through pretty easy if I've done this right. I might poke it through with my pokey tool again here just to just to get it. Just to get it. And just widen it and poke it through. I mean, find your cover one. Where's my cover one? I could mark them, but I don't. It's, it's right up here. I, it's going to be a little uh, right in. Oops. Right in there. And push it through. See, there it goes. And you can just kind of, I'm just widening that hole again so that my needle can find its way with my pokey tool. All right. While my pokey tool is still there, I'm going to get my needle ready. And you might want to clip it again here. Let me grab another bulldog here. Yeah. 
And then you'll find that I'll put these clips on. I'll take the clips off. I'll put them on. I take them off because sometimes they they grab them when I want them to be grabbed, and then I don't want them to be grabbed anymore. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to take my pokey tool out and put my needle in. And that went so easy. After you get this top one in, you've kind of centered your paper, your 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 hollows and your papers. And it goes a lot easier. Okay, I'm gonna set my needle down. I'm gonna open it up. I'm gonna kind of keep my thread straight, keep it clean, and then I'm gonna pull. Pull, pull, pull. Just go slow. Go nice and smooth and easy. It's not going any place. You're not going any place. You don't have to be there at a deadline. You're just binding your journal. <laughs> See, sometimes I get a little bit longer thread on when I do double-sided. See that little loop in there? That means that this thread is longer than this. So if I can figure out which thread is which on the back, and sometimes I only know by pulling on one or the other, and if it's not the one, then it's the other, but sometimes it's hard to get a hold of them too. All righty, let's pull on this one. Let's pull on this one. Which one is it? Of course, I, I always pull on the wrong one first. Is it that one? Yeah. There we go. That's pretty good. So pull it through, pull it through, nice and clean and nice and clean. There we go. Now I'm using black thread. You could use white. I like the, ba the black thread on the back of my book. Uh, you could paint your thread after you've done this, but then it gets all stiff and yucky. Take this off again. I'm done with that. I also find that it's hardest... Um, I really probably should have hit went to that center one first. Let's see. Here, let's see. Up here, down there, up here, down. No, I think I'm okay. We're going to go to this one next, but we're going to come from the back. And that's what I find the hardest to do. Let's get our hole. See, that went through real easy. That went through really easy. My pokey tool did, so hopefully my needle will. Let's pull it back out and put my pokey tool from the back to the center. Hopefully it'll go through just as easy. Sometimes it will and sometimes it won't. No. Uh, come on, you did it good here. You went through easy there. Here. There we go. Am I through it? Yeah. It's kind of, that's why I like to wiggle my tool around. It's kind of find its way here. And yeah, it makes the holes in the center of the page, but this is just my art journal. Okay, now I'm going to get my needle. I'm going to come from the back into the front. Let's see, that went through pretty good. Pull it through, pull it through, pull it through. I've been going for about an hour and 20 minutes at this. But I did, I did put my calendar page in and I did a lot of yakking around the way. If I'm sitting doing this by myself, it doesn't take as long. But when you're talking your way through this for the benefit of somebody else, you want to, you want to talk <laughs> and you have to think of and explain what you're doing and keep your stuff out of the way you know that just all takes time to think it through but if you've done this if you've never done this before it seems hard but if you've done this several times it's not as hard it's you know you sit here and you can get this I did it I had my whole book bound in one evening. See, I got that a longer thread again. You can tell because one loop is longer than the other. So I tried to find out which thread, uh, separate them here, which thread is longer. Oh, I pulled on the right one that time. See, I shortened them up. And that just makes for a cleaner bind on the back here when you pull it tight. And you want to pull it fairly taut. 
You want it fairly taut in there. You don't want it so tight that it's pulling at the, you know, warping it, but you want it taut. It'll, it'll find its way. It'll find its own looseness. And then sometimes I go through and just straighten my, see how that loop there, that means that one thread is much longer than the other. So I just kind of straighten it out. By the time I get here, it's getting shorter and shorter. And we're getting down to, where's my needle? We're getting down there. There. All right, so now we want to come from here into here. We're just doing every other one. Every other one. That's what a pamphlet stitch is. In and out, in and out, in and out. And some some people will start in the center and go up here, go down here, go from here to here to here to here to, you know. I just, sometimes I take a different path. I think I'm doing a little bit different path than what I normally do. But I'm okay with it. I, it's going to work. Uh, I'm just doing every other one. Let's get my hole here. I want to make sure that I've got a path for my needle to travel. And it's finding its path here. Good. And I'm just moving it around. And hold it tight. Grab your needle. Come on, needle. Sometimes it's hard to work with one hand. You know, this needle has tape on it because it's it's gone through and touched that Gorilla tape. So it's a little sticky at the point. But you can clean that off with alcohol. Look how quickly that went through. So that's what I say. By the time you get down here, you have this all worked out to where it's finding its place. So what you have to do now is just be careful of the tangles. Just go slow. Pull your thread through, pull it through, pull it through. Keep everything off of your desk. Keep a clean work area so it doesn't have anything to grab onto. It's a climbing vine. It will grab onto anything and cling to it. I should say it's a clinging vine. And I'm just pulling it from underneath. But yeah, I like to work. You say, well, why are you working with such a long thread, Mary? Well, that's because after I get this stitch, this is my simple pamphlet stitch, I use the ends of this thread to make my tassel. I don't tie on a separate tassel thread. Now, it could, you could. You could. I don't have anything against it. I don't. <laughs> so, if it frustrates you to have a long thread... Go for the short thread. Do what do what works for you. I'm just doing what works for me. And that's back to that thing that uh, Aunt Beck, she was saying in one of her videos, we were talking about that. She was talking about it. How when you hold your knitting needle or when you hold your pen, she was using, uh, she was talking about her doodling and the pens that you use and everything. And she was saying, we have different... Uh, we have different techniques. We have things. We hold our pens differently, what's comfortable in our hand. And we use the tools that we're comfortable with. I, get, I need to get this punched here. And uh, do what works for you. If you see me doing something that just doesn't work for you, go find what works for you. Uh, I found that in knitting. I had, I had to... Because I'm a beginning knitter. I didn't start knitting until March of this year. And I was having trouble. I looked at several videos trying to figure out how in the world they held their thread. <laughs> finally, finally, I gave up and just did what works for me. And so this technique is working for me in this journal. Now, next year, I may be off onto something else. So do what works for you. Uh, I'm just showing you what works for me. I'm going to come back through right here, I believe. But on the other hand, if you find something that works for you and you're happy with it, don't change it just because somebody else advises you to do it another way. If you find that their advice is good advice, oops, I'm not coming through that hole. 
If you find that their advice is good advice and you like what they told you, then by all means use it. But if you, if you, I would advise you to, I would advise you to, if they give you advice to at least try what they're saying or to think it through and uh, maybe try it. If you don't like it, just, you don't have to tell them it's bad advice <laughs> that you don't like it. You don't have to tell them that, but just go on with your own, your own technique. Don't change what you are doing just to suit somebody else. Um, if they, if you like what they do and, and you thought it was a good tip, all the, all the better. But if you don't, Generally, I like to hear what people tell me in the live streams. This still is not going through right. I'm coming from the back. This is not going through right. I get it poked here. I get it poked through here fine, but I'm not coming back through fine. Right in there. Um... I like to hear what people have to tell me, but I have to tell you that I won't do just that because somebody told it to me. Just because somebody advises me to do something doesn't mean that I'm going to do it that way all my life. I might go try it. I'll thank them for it. But it's not if I if I'm uncomfortable doing it or if it's not working for me, I won't be doing it. <sighs> And here I'm yow yowing about that, and I'm I get my needle to go through this way, but I'm having trouble from the back to the front again. Why is that? And don't worry about all this little stuff if you get it. I don't worry about the little pokey stuff that well, this one I'll need, and that one I'll need, but I've got three here. I don't worry about that because generally it's not noticeable. Um your threads, your tassels will cover all that up. No, unless they're studying or unless you're teaching a class or something like that. Don't let that bother you. There, I think I got it. It generally will not show. If you're doing it for, um, or unless you're a perfectionist. <laughs> I'm looking for my needle here. Uh, see if I can go back through this. I think it's this one. Which one was it? Yeah. Yeah, I'm having some issues with that. I give it through. All right, hold it right there. Get my needle ready. Put it through there. A tape closes in over it. There we go. That went through fine. I just needed a bigger hole. There we go. Now, pull your thread back through. If you feel a knot coming on, just gently pull it out. Pull it away. Don't, don't tug on it. There we go. See, now you just have to clean up your threads so that you can pull them back through. And the shorter your thread gets, the easier it's going to be. The, the less problem you're going to have with the tangle when you have a shorter thread. And so by the time I get this first, this first uh, run done, I'm generally, I'm generally pretty much centered on it. Pull it through, pull it through. Now, we've got this space is open and this space is open. I skipped this space. So we're going to come up through here. We're going to go down 
And then we're going to come up and and uh, I'll probably skip over to here and then come down here and up through there again. You're going, you want to make sure all your open spaces are covered. So what I'm going to do, and if you miss one, if it's, I don't worry about it. I don't worry about it. But I think I got it. I think I got it. Okay, now I'm going to go back down through this one. And this should be much easier to go through because I've already, you're going through the same hole again. Uh, get my needle pokey tool out of the way. Get my thread straight here. We're going to go back down through this one. And in needlework, when you go through the same hole twice, that's called a dirty stitch. Just for those of you who, those of you who want to know, it's called a dirty stitch. And it's coming right here. I can see it poking through. There we go. Now at this point, sometimes I need my pliers because I've got four threads in there. And I grab a hold of this needle with my pliers and pull once you pull the get that eye of that needle through, sometimes it's kind of hard. And I need more of a grip on it, but once I get it through, then I can just pull it. See how nice that pulls, but you got to pull it clean. Get my pliers out and turn this over. We don't want to knot it up. Make sure your threads aren't catching on things. Make sure you've got a clean, and then just pull it through. Pull, 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 pull. Make it clean, Mary. Make it clean. And I'm pulling from the back here. I'm just pulling this thread through. It's coming back through this. Uh, there. Pulling through, it's pulling through. Now I want to show you something that I do on the back of this too. Let's get a, this little loopy thing pulled through here. All right. On the back of this, I got just maybe ooh, a sixteenth of an inch between these. For me, that happens because I'm punching my own holes. I'm putting the needle through. Uh, if you, if you pre-punched all your holes and had them all. I don't worry about all that. I leave that for people who worry about those things. But I'll just take my thread and go back under this loop again. And I'll pull those two threads together. See, I'm, I'm just coming under. I'm coming up. And then I'm, going, I'm coming under this bottom stitch. And that will pull, that will pull these two threads together. Now well, you'll see when I get there. Pull it through, pull it through, pull it through. There. Am I talking? Yeah. I have to, when the phone rings or something's going on with the phone, I have to turn it on mute. And that happened a few minutes ago. I went mute. <laughs> oh, dear. Am I still mute? I don't think so. No, I'm live, but as I'm talking, it's not saying anything. Let's see what I'm doing here. All right, it's recording me. <laughs> I intend on not editing this. All right, so I've got it kind of crooked here. I don't mind. I don't mind. I went from here to here, but I'm going to leave it that way. In the end, I don't think it'll matter too much. I wanted to be over here more. But that's not how I did it, so I'm going to leave it. Let's come in through this. We want to go back through so I can poke my hole in here from the back. We have to, we're, going in, we're coming back through this way. There's a hole right there. And there's no thread in there. So let me put my hole in there. Where am I at here? I'm down here. 
And sometimes I have to tell you, sometimes I poked all these holes through, but sometimes I have to tell you, sometimes I think it's just as easy to poke the holes as you go. Then you only have one hole to worry about. But if I get more than one, I don't worry about it. Like I said, most of the time, my tassel will cover it up. Nobody notices unless they're studying my binding. And I'm not going to let them do that enough to, for me to worry about it. I'm not being graded on this. I love what I'm doing. I want to get my journal bound. In the end, it works out for me. I'm coming back up through here. And just kind of work your needle through. Sometimes you have to manipulate it. There it comes. Well, see, I'm way off over that way. But if I take my thread and move it over like that, or maybe even in the center. And this is another instance where I might grab a hold of it with my pliers. Let's see what's going on here. And we're okay. Yeah, there we go. That's pretty good. See, I'm gonna I'm gonna go. Well, I'll show you. I'll pull it through this way. Pull it through gently. Pull it through, pull it through, pull it through. We're just doing up and down, up and down, up and down. And I have to tell you, mine is is not the perfectionist method of doing this. I, I am not a perfectionist. Uh, and generally, I like what I do. It may not be perfect, but it's mine, and I love it. So it's all nice in there. This is a little crooked here. I don't mind that too much. <laughs> so here's the thing, though. I really wanted to... Let's see, if I go across this way... I need to catch this, which is right here. So I am going, what I'm going to do, and I would probably advise you not to do this, but I have to, I, I started this out wrong <laughs> with my holes. Um, since I want to cover up this space and I went in here, I'm going to come back down and through it again on another side so that I can go from here to here. That probably is uh, a fix. You might have that happen to you. You aren't going to do it perfect all the time. Do you think you are? Well, then you're, you're smarter than the average bear because the average bear is going to make mistakes. And if you never make a mistake, <laughs> I feel sorry for you because you'll never find fixes. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to come back down, probably in the hole that I created there. We're going to go back through this right here. And it's going through pretty good. It's easier for me to come from the inside and go from the outside than come from the outside and go through the inside. There we go. Now, see, the reason I did that is because I want to cover this space up. And so I'm, I'm basically coming back through this same stitch. Uh, catching on here. No. I'm pretty happy with it. I'm not unhappy with this. There we go. There we go. Oops, I'm getting a loop. I'm getting it crunched up here. When that happens, just pull it clean. If you if you pull it tight from here, you're knotted. Just pull it out. Pull that knot out. Or it's not even a knot yet. If you pull it tight, it'll become a knot. And just let it go through till it gets all through the paper. There we go. There we go. Now, I'm going to come from here. Ah. Journal sent, created here. See, I'm getting it bound. I'm getting it bound. I'm going to come from here, and I'm going to go down into through here, into here. That last thing that I showed you, uh, where I did the went back through, not the same hole, but one close to it, was a fix. It was a fix. <laughs> it 
it was an, an allowable fix. Okay, so I'm going to go back through the same hole, and hopefully it'll wind up in the same place here. Uh, it's pretty close, not quite. But generally, I'm painting this area, or I'm putting washi tape. Generally, this... What you're seeing here, generally, generally, after you get this all worked, you you won't even notice what's going on in here. You might notice the black thread, but black was the color that I chose. I uh, get this through. Sometimes again here, I won't pull up with my pliers. Sometimes it's just easier, just like that. Oops, get a hold of it. There. And then after you get the eye of that needle through, get your pliers out of the way. Pull it through, pull it through, pull it through. Now I'm just showing you how I do this. I'm not, here again, I'm, I'm not trying to teach anything. This is more of a demo. This is more sharing. This is how I would, if I were sitting here binding this by myself, this is what I would be doing. And look, I have a knot. And here's the thing to do when you have a knot. Don't panic. You pull it out. You don't pull it tight. You pull it loose. And I might have to loosen this. Get a hold of this. And a hold of it. Pull it loose. Pull it loose. And it's really hard to do this with black thread because you can't see what you're doing. There, I got it. There you go. You wanna you wanna work it loose. You don't want to pull it tight. Pulling it through, pulling it through. And I usually find that I get knots because my threads are ones longer than the other. If at all possible, keep your your threads the same length where you have a nice a nice even thread loop there. All right. We're just about done. We're going to go back down through here. We're going to come up through there, and then we're going to do the top. So let's, it's pretty easy to go from the front to the back. So here it comes. Pretty easy. Easy peasy. And so, and my thread's getting shorter, so it's getting easier to pull. Let's pull it through gently, but taunt. We don't want it to be have thread gaps. Pull it through, pull it through, pull it through. Like this, like this. Pull it through. There we go. Now we're going to come from here. over this way and we're going to go down through this this is number two this is one two so let's make that a little bit kind of hard to see in there because that thread's there i'm going to poke that hole a little nicer if i can yeah and wobble my thread through i do this several times while i'm working but i find it's harder to go down from the outside through to the inside than from the inside to the outside. I find that this journey is a little bit more difficult. I don't know why. Maybe because I'm poking from the inside to the outside. I try to poke from the outside to the inside too, but if I wobble my thread around here, it depends a lot, too. Maybe if I had a larger awl, make a deeper hole. Let's put my thread. And the needle's going through there. Good. It went right in. Yay. Now, I, this, I threaded this up and down a little bit different than I usually do. But that's really kind of okay. 
um, it's okay to have, I'll show you in a minute here. I had that, that happen down here. This is a little off center here. To tell you the truth, that doesn't really bother me because I can come in. I can actually come in here and uh, pull this thread over a little and uh, put a charm on it. It'll straighten it out a little. I'm not too worried about it. And I wouldn't want you to worry about it if that happened to you. I'll show you what I mean when we get this done. <laughs> now, I have, I have this space. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back through this second hole. Right here, this number, this is the top one. This is 1A and 1B. I'm going to go back down through 1B. 1B, 1B, 1B. There, well, almost there. 1B. And pull it through. 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 And now I want to take care of this gap here. So I'm going back down through number two. And I try to make it through the same hole here, but that's a little hard to do. And see, I'm way off. I'm not sure exactly why. Probably because I don't have a I don't have a large enough hole with my pokey tool, but there I'm on. I'm on it there. We're almost on it. No. Yeah. My needle catching on itself here. Let's get this. My pokey tool. I might go to the hardware store and invest in an awl that has a larger shank. I'm just using what I have. But for now, this is fine. This is fine. This is what I use. And through there. Up through here. Oh, it wants to come. That's pretty close. I don't know why it can't find its own spot in there. I have one. Put it through. Put it through. Put it through. Put it through. Pretty close. Pull it through. Get my pokey tool out of the way. Pull it gently, 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 gently. Did I have it in there? Yeah, that's pretty good. All right, now I'm going to... I'm going to come around and wrap my needle around that just to pull those threads together. That's what I do. You can do it as you wish. If you want to pull it all out and do it again, you can. <laughs> that doesn't bother me one bit. <laughs> now I'm going to go back. And I usually, I don't usually have this extra travel here. But I will this time because of the way I threaded it. So if you're using this as a tutorial, I'm just kind of showing you. This really is not a tutorial. This is generally you come here. Uh, here, do your little top knot in there. Go to your center. Come from your center here. Go here to here to here or to here to. I show you on the next one. <laughs> Generally, you don't want this traveling double because I got a travel here, and I'm going back up. But I don't see where it hurts. This is just my art journal. I'm not that. I'm not going to, I'm not going to complain about it. I can't get that journey, though. What am I doing here? That's interesting. We'll go through it that way, though. 
poke it through. Probably because I'm not holding my paper the same way. I'm off a little, but I'll match those threads up. I don't want to fool with it. Pull it through, pull it through, pull it through. Make sure it's not knotted on the inside. Pull it clean, pull it through, pull it through. Now I, I'm off a little again here. So what? I'm going to put my thread under. Under and just even up my threads. Yeah. Like this, like this, like this, like this, like this. There. You can hardly see that you're off there. And now I'm going to make a knot up here. I'm going to make a intentional knot. Pull it through, pull it through, pull it through. Keep your thread clean. Pull it through, pull it through, pull it through. I guess what you could learn from me when you do this is don't panic when it looks like you've done something wrong. Figure out what it was and find a way to either redo it, correct it, uh, or fix it. If you I, it's wrong, I would say wrong is a relative term. If you do something that you weren't intending to do, <laughs> to me, there's really no right or wrong in doing this. Uh, there's the way to bind, and uh, if you don't follow that way, I suppose you could call it wrong, but uh, I don't. If I don't do it like like the original instructions say to do, I say it was my way. <laughs> it's not wrong. It's just my way. <laughs> and generally, I'm happy with things. Generally, oh, by the time I get it all done and all bound, I'm happy with it. I want to, and here's an example of it right here. If you look, maybe I can hold it, hold it up closer. If you look at this, you see how that line slants? It goes that way. That that could be called a mistake, but I don't call it a mistake. What I'm going to do is, is um, I suppose I have enough thread on here. And that's one reason why I leave enough thread. I'm just going to travel down. I'm going to travel down. And by traveling down, I mean I'm just going to come through here, pull my thread through, keep it clean, keep it clean. And you could have done this when you were at this point. Uh, and maybe I should have, but I didn't. But I'm just going to travel down. This To me, this kind of strengthens the the spine, or maybe I'm just making excuses for it, but <laughs> so be it. I'm just pulling my thread. I'm doing another journey down. I'm coming down, just kind of looping, st stitching the, under the stitches that I already have, kind of traveling down the spine. Travel down. Now what are you going to do, Mary? Now what are you going to do? You're just going to put it through the same? No, I'm going to fix it here. I'm going to come down straight, and I'm going to pull those two threads together. So I'm going to go through the hole that I originally, I think I had a little trouble here getting through it. So let's poke another hole. I think I originally meant that to be right here, and it ended up over there. So it might, let's. Go back down in. Let's match it up here. Let's go back down in there. And let's just drill a hole. And drill a hole. Where's it coming out over here? It's just a little bit off over here, too. But we'll we'll pull those threads together, too. And make my... Make my... Enlarge this so I can get my needle through. And you find your papers will curl up at the edges. You can fix that. You can, it won't hurt. By the time you journal on here, you won't even notice it. Or if you notice it, it'll be a part of your journal. Get your things out of the way. Get your thread straight. 
they are gonna come from the back, hopefully, from the back into the front. So I think I went through here. I'm gonna go in there. Oh, it went through perfect. Didn't even go through the hole that I poked. <laughs> we'll go back through down through the hole that I poked. Am I got a knot? Have I got a knot? Don't pull it tight. Pull it loose. Come on. It's, when you get tape, a lot of tape on your needle, it pulls on that thread. And that bothered me to no end. Where's my other clamp? <laughs> there. I was pulling this knot out. You don't want to pull knots, knots tight. You want to pull them loose. So you kind of try to find the loop. Because all it's done is one loop, one thread is worked under a loop and where it shouldn't. And it's made a little knot. And it's kind of pulling it loose instead of pulling it tight. And it's really hard to see with black thread. It's hard to see. I think I got it. I think I've got it. Maybe not. Well, if you can't get it, unthread your needle, unthread your needle, pull your thread out, pull your thread out. It's another thing to do. Yeah, unthread your needle because it's it's wound itself tight here. And then find your knot again. Where do, where was it? Right right here. And sometimes it's easier when you have unthreaded your needle and it it works itself loose. Boy, I really did that, didn't I? This is the point to where people would say, see if you would have used the shorter thread, that wouldn't have happened. Well, it can happen regardless. I have to get it up to my eyes. It's black thread. It's hard to see. You know, maybe if I have a pen that doesn't have tape glue on it. Penelope, I need a pen. Thank you. Sticky tape on that needle. There. There. I got it. I've got it. I've got it. I've got it. It twisted itself together into a knot. That's what it did, sure enough. More than one knot. I got one worked loose. I'm just about done, too. And it had to do that. Am I going to edit this part out? No. I want you to see what I go through when I bind. There we go. 
kind of working these threads loose. Boy, that really was a stinker too. Oh, I'm going to keep my hands straight. I have to get it up to my eyes. I'm sorry. Mm. Let's see what I'm doing here. Boy, is she going to get it? Is she going to get it? Or is she going to cut it? <laughs> she's going to get it. I'll tell you right now because she's not giving up. Not when she's live. And I don't want to edit my file. So I'm going to work at it till I get it loose. I'm going to work at it till I get it loose. One little knot yet in there, there. I can feel it. Boy, it really knotted itself up. It really knotted itself up in there. There we go. I think I got it. It's a weakened the thread. It has weakened the thread. I don't know if it's completely loose yet or not. I might break the thread, but if I do, I do. Huh. Isn't that something? It's wrapped around itself. In there. Now well, I might... I might not be able to recover from this because I'm weakening the thread as I'm pulling it loose. I can't get that one knot out. And it's really weakened the thread. It really has pulled on itself here. Right in there. Right in here. Well, this has been a cool session, hasn't it?
Hmm. Well, I'm not going to get it. So what are you going to do? I'm going to tie it off. Uh, this is not what I normally don't run into this bad of a problem. I'm going to cut it off. I'm going to continue fixing this, and then I'm going to sew my tassel back in. I normally do not do this, but I've I've got an irreparable knot here. But I'm not going to let it bother me, and you shouldn't let it bother you if it happens to you. The object is to get your journal bound. So clean your thread up here. Make the threads nice and even. Clip off the unevenness. Put your thread through. We have to come back through here again. Back to what I was originally doing. Come through here. Whoops. Around here. Down. Around here. And in here, in through the hole there. And loop it around. Pull those two together. Go back down in. Go back from here, back it down in there as much as you can. There. Now, what we want to do is we want to pull these two together because I got one coming straight down and I got one at an angle. So I want to pull the one that's angled taut to the one that's straight, and that will pull this line straight. I hope that that's clear. Now I'm gonna go. I'm going to travel back, and I'll time. I'll put a tassel on here. I don't normally do that. I normally use what's the thread that's remaining on my needle as my tassel. But I had a knot. If you never get a knot, <laughs> you're a better person than most of us. If you never get a knot. All right. So I'm just traveling back up. I'm going to tie a knot up here. And normally, I would have enough thread on here to do a tassel. But because I had that knot, I don't have enough thread. So I'm going to, I'm going to tie a thread onto here. I'm going to create me another big thread. See, I, I need a thread about this length. So let's get my thread out. We're going to create a tassel. I'm going to hold it about the length of that we want it and double it. And however thick you want to make your tassel, just keep doubling it. I'm going to make me a pretty thick one, I think. I like big, thick tassels. So double it and keep doubling it. Double, 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 toil and trouble double. Uh, do I want another one? I'll put another one. Now, after I've done all that, then I'm going to go back and double my big length. So just the same way. Pull it through, pull it through, pull it through. And you're probably going, Mary, you lost me. <laughs> and I, I think I need to say, go back to the beginning. <laughs> Go back to the beginning and watch. This is about how I bind all my journals. If I make a mistake, I just find a fix. Make a mistake, you find a fix. I'm going to thread my two threads through here again. I'm just going to let that one hang down. It's good. It's okay. It's fine the way it is. Thread the two 
open ends through your needle, if you can, <laughs> give you a length. We've got the loop down over here, got the loop-de-loop, -loop. put your loop up there. I'm going to knot, knot it into here. So put your needle through the threads. I see it's one to go underneath of my tape. Yeah, come on. Underneath. There. Underneath. And yeah, get everything out of the way or you'll have another knot. Make it nice and clean. Mary, if you didn't work with such big threads, you wouldn't have such pro big problems. <laughs> big problems don't bother me because uh, you find a way out of them. You find your way. Let me straighten this thread out while I'm finding my way. Let's pull it through gently. I've got a big thread here. And I'm not going to knot it, am I? No, 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 no. It's good. All right. Pull it through clean. Pull it through clean. I'm going to make a tassel. Pull it through. Pull it through. Pull it through. Now, at this point, you can either put your needle back through here and knot it, or you can tie it on to here. And think of what I'm going to do is pull this down a good length, and then I'm going to knot it with this uh, with this open one over here, the one the ending one of the other thread. I'm just going to knot them together. Not 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 not. This is my thread from my needle. This is my thread from from the end. And I want to knot these two together. Like that. And make a big knot. Three or four times. This is a this will be your tassel. It doesn't matter if it's knotted up at the top, at least it doesn't to me. Now, I generally don't put any beads on these until I'm done with my journal. Because I find that as I'm journaling, the beads get in my way. Now, to make my tassel, here's my length of my tassel here, generally, about this length, from here to here. So here's my thread to my needle. It's a double thread. And what I do... If I have this big long thread, yeah, you got a big long thread, Mary. Yeah, I do. All right. So I come here. I make it about the length. I have a loop on each one of these and I bring it back to the top. I take my needle, get your things off your desk, keep your desk clean. And remember, your thread is a clinging vine. Make a knot up at the top. We doubled it. We doubled it. See, this thread comes from here, it goes down, it forms a loop, it comes back, and I'm just tying it into this again. Kind of hold these tight. If you're new at it and it's falling all over the place to you, put a little piece of washi tape there to hold it tight for you. Keep this side clean. That's If you don't keep this thread clean, that's how you get the knots. It pulls on itself. It can't cling to anything around it, so it clings to itself. It's got a natural twist. So you want to keep that thread clean. Keep it away from these threads as much as possible. And you want your loop, though. You, you, you're keeping your loop. So pull it through, pull it through. See, so I've got a short and a long thread here. There. Yeah. Maybe hold on to those so you don't pull it through. Here's where it helps to have more than one hand, more than two hands. Pull it through, pull it through. So it's about the same. Your loop is about the same as the length of your tassel right there. And I make my tassel a little bit longer because I'm going to clip when I'm done. Now I need to tie a knot again. Clean up your thread here if it's got an even short and long threads. Let's clean it up. Yeah. I got 
this one hanging by itself here. And I'm going to knot it in here. Just tie it on. Pull it through, pull it through. And generally, I get these short and long threads when I'm pulling. I generally pull on one thread and not the other. And that creates, that helps create your tangly knots. Try to keep your threads the same length. Try to keep these the same length. I can see I'm shortening these. I didn't mean to shorten them. Uh, let's see if I can pull this out again. Uh, pull it, pull it, pull it. Yeah. It might help to clip these. I don't generally clip them, but I'm having an issue with that. So I'm going to pull this and clip those together. See if that will hold them for me. Pull this through. And generally, yeah, <laughs> what I'm doing there. What did that come from? I'll take care of it when I get there. There. Came from here. Came from there. And I'm pulling the wrong. There. Talking to myself. Talking to myself. Just trying to get this into a knot. Got the little loop. Got a clean loop. Yeah, I'm going to make a knot. <laughs> With this long thread. Yes, I am. Mary, I don't think I can follow you. You've lost me completely. Sorry about that. Go back to the beginning. <laughs> Start all over. And let me tell you, I don't do this the same way every time. I do what works for me when it works for me. And I would expect you to do that too. And I tell you, they wanted to see how I bind these. There are... Many, 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 many tutorials out there how to bind. Go find your one that you think you can do and do it. I'm just showing you how I bind. I'm not expecting you to bind like I do. I'm just showing you what I do. Because somebody asked me to. So there we go. Red gets shorter. It gets easier to control. You know that. Now I'm going to take this clip off. See, I'm getting my tassel here. I'm just looping that thread down, bringing it back up here, and making another knot. And I have a much shorter thread. so, And I just make my knot by sewing into the knot that's already there. Pull that through. Pull it through. Keep it as clean as you can. Yeah, I've got to bring it through, bring it through again. It's kind of hard to see with this black thread. And as it gets shorter, it's a lot easier for me to handle. You knew that, didn't you? But the only trouble is if when you have really short threads, you have to keep tying on like what I'm doing now. I had to tie that thread on because I had to cut a part off. Make another loop. I just keep making loops. This will probably be my last one. I just keep making loops until I run out of thread. This will probably be my last one because I'm just, I'll just let this hang down this way. And I'll tie it up here. I'll tie it up here tight. Now, I think I'm only going to film this signature, me binding this signature. I think I'll go ahead and bind the other one off camera because you've seen how I do it. You've seen next time I make my June journal, I'll probably film it again and, and uh, maybe I'll 
bind it a different way through here. Uh, I didn't travel the same way that I usually do. My journal's not done by any means. I need to put my wrap around and my inside pockets on there. Maybe I'll do that tomorrow morning. Maybe I'll do an impromptu tomorrow morning. Okay, so here's my tassel. It's a beautiful tassel. Let's give Penelope back her one of her needles. She says, thank you, Mary. Thank you, thank you. Let's get rid of that thread. So, Penelope, if I lose a needle, I'll give you one back. I'll give you two back. All right. So what I want to do is I want to trim these tassel threads. You can always make them shorter. I like to make them long to begin with. And depending, if I want to cut them clear off here, I have the length to do it. But I cut them pretty close to the end of the loops down here to begin with. You can always shorten them. It'd be pretty hard to make them longer again. <laughs> So there you go. Now let's take these off. Let's close it up. There's my journal. There's my journal. Now I need to, it's kind of, it's kind of uh, curly in here, but when I put a pocket in here, that'll take care of all of this. And I'll put a wrap around. I, when I do my wrap around, I'll put in my, my uh, other signature. I'm not going to do this one online. I'll put in my second signature, and then I'll have room for my canvas. My wraparound will go on my back inside, and it'll wrap around this way. And that will be, and then I'll have a band that will come around this way. And that will be my April journal. I don't think that I'll do anything more to the cover. Excuse me, my May journal. <coughs> Excuse me, I talked too long. I don't think I'll do any more to my cover. If I do anything more to it, I'll put some black edging like I have here around here. I have Gorilla Tape around the spine here just to, you know, the opening and the closing. I have it around in here too. I'll have a pocket here that will cover up most of this. Uh, my wrap around here will make a pocket on the inside there. So, yeah, I'm happy with it. In the end, all that trouble with that binding, you didn't think that it was going to work. Look how clean that is. Look, I'm proud of it. it of, with all that trouble that I went through, I'm happy with it in the end. And I usually am. By the time I get done, it's pretty clean in here. It's a nice line. It's a thick line. But generally when I'm working, I'll either paint over that or I might glue over it. My ends, my pages are curling. I, I, uh, when I come in and work on this, this generally works itself back out again. I don't worry about this stuff too much. Uh, it's an art journal. It's an art journal. This is something to have fun with. This isn't anything that, you know, that's, <laughs> what do I say, going to, <laughs> uh, um, it's not supposed to be a masterpiece. It's supposed to be something you can pick up and use every day. And have fun with it. And not worry about ruining it. Not worry about making mistakes in it. This is a this is a place to, to work in. So with all of that said. I have been going for 2 hours and 29 minutes and 25 seconds. So if I hurry and close. I will be going 2 and a half hours. To show you how to do this. Now it usually does not take me that long to bind a uh, a signature in but I talked my way through this I'm explaining things it will probably take me about an hour maybe to punch my holes and bind it in depending on what kind of trouble I get into and if I have to do any fixes let's give Penelope back her pen say thank you for watching I hope that it was as clear as I hope that I know that it's going to be confusing to some of you but here again, I don't mean this as a tutorial per se. It is more of showing you how I bind my journals. Let's go this way. It comes this way to center it. It's not really a tutorial. If it was a tutorial, I would have been all upset if I had a mistake. <laughs> I got over that very early in life. Because I make a lot of mistakes. Don't upset me anymore. Alrighty. 
I think I will probably do an impromptu tomorrow morning. So, and uh, maybe I'll work on the wraparound. Maybe I'll work on getting the other signature in there tonight. So thank you for watching and I will see you on the next page.